Hello, everyone. I am Ying Li, a fourth year PhD student at UIUC, co advised by Professor Bo Li and Professor Tao Xie. It's a great honor to be here to receive the Rising Star Award and give a presentation on my research, enabling large scale certifiable trustworthy machine learning. I plan to organize this talk into three parts. First, I'll briefly introduce the background on certified robustness for deep learning. Our work is built upon the existing uh, works, so I will introduce the background of them. Then, I will introduce our serious work towards generalizing certified methods for trustworthy machine learning in the real world. Our efforts can be divided into three aspects. We provide tighter and more scalable certification. We propose a more effective, robust training method, and we generalize the certification methods towards real-world specifications in trustworthy machine learning. The last part of this talk will be a discussion of challenges and possible solutions in certified machine learning. So neural networks are vulnerable to adversarial attacks, where small imperceptible perturbations can fool the neural network to make wrong predictions. Surrounding this issue, an arms race between defenders and attackers was one of the main topics over the years, where the attackers and defenders are attacking and defending their counterparts adaptively. Can we end this game? The research on certified robustness uh, provides a possible solution. Certified robustness research can be divided into two parts, robust certification and robust training. The robust certification methods verify that for a given neural network and the clean input, whether the model is robust within a certain perturbation radius. The robust training approaches train neural networks in a particular way so that robustness certification or verification methods can verify it to have good robustness. The arms race can be ended because if the verification methods find that there is no adversary example, any future attacks are destined to fail. Now, we precisely define the certification problem that is commonly studied in the literature. Consider a classification model with input X and label Y. The certification goal is to check whether for any perturbation with delta, as known as the LP norm of delta is bounded by some predefined threshold epsilon, the model's prediction doesn't change. If the model is not robust, a certification or verification method should always output false, so it is called a certification. If the model is robust, we hope the certification or verification method could output the true as much as possible, so that they could be called tight. In our recent SNP 2023 paper, we make a comprehensive taxonomy for current verification approaches for neural networks. I'll briefly introduce two main branches of verification methods. They are linear relaxation methods and randomized smoothing methods. They achieve SOTA deterministic robustness guarantee and SOTA probabilistic robustness guarantee, respectively. To delve into the linear relaxation approach, let us first formulate the structure of a typical neural network. A typical neural network has a layered structure. The first layer reads the input. Then each layer executes an affine transformation and then imposes an activation function for each component, usually with the value function. The last layer has exactly C components that corresponds to C classes. There are confidence scores of each class. The model predicts the class with high score. As we can see, the only nonlinearity of neural networks come from the value activation. Now we deal with this nonlinearity. As shown in the figure, for the value activation, we can bound its output by a lower line and an upper line. As a result, we can propagate these linear bounds through the layers so that the output of the neural network can be literally lower and upper bounded. This is called linear relaxation method, and this method is the most widely used verification method for general neural networks. Since this method achieves both good efficiency and good tightness, 
However, for very large networks, such as those for ImageNet, the relaxation is still too slow and too loose to be applied. To deal with these large networks, let me introduce randomized smoothing. Randomized smoothing is another type of certification method and it also adapts the inference process. Here's a high level idea of randomized smoothing. First, we train a neural network on the Gaussian noise corruption so that the model can still work relatively well for Gaussian noise inputs. Then we smooth such F into a new classifier G, the smooth classifier. G samples multiple random noises and adds them to the input. Then it predicts the most probable prediction by F on the noise. For example, consider a panda image X. With Gaussian corruption, the model F actually classifies the Gaussian distribution centered at X. There is a 80% probability where panda is returned, 15% probability where gibbon is returned, and 5% probability where cat is returned. Then, GX will be panda. The main insight is that if we slightly shift the center of the Gaussian, the probabilities of each class can't change by too much given the largely overlapped support. Therefore, as long as we just slightly shift x, in other words, add small perturbations to x, the panda is still more probable than gibbon and cat, so we are still robust. Prior work has given this robustness guarantee. It reads that as long as the perturbation is within r under L2 norm, the prediction is guaranteed to be the same. To compute this R, one only needs to low PA and PB, which have high confidence bound with mount color sampling and don't require the expensive bound propagation through layers. So randomized smoothing can derive a probability guarantee that is very scalable and it can handle image net models. Therefore, our research mainly focused on improving and generalizing the randomized smoothing-based certification. Now, after introducing the background, let me introduce our work towards generalizing certification for trustworthy machine learning. In the first and the second part, we boost the certified robustness guarantee via tighter certification and more effective training. Then, in the last part, we generalize certification for LP robustness to a much broader range of notions. As the first part, let me introduce our recent work that tightens the certification for randomized smoothing. Recall that the classic randomized smoothing has this certified radius R expression in practice. This tight certification radius R is proposed in 2019. After this R randomized smoothing is proposed, many efforts have been made to improve the certified radius under different LP, LP norms. Two common sources of improvements are improving the smoothing distribution and improving the base classifiers by training. However, there's not much work that significantly improves the certification itself. They may improve distribution and training. Why? It's because the certification of remote smoothing suffers from a theoretical barrier. This barrier says that randomized smoothing is enabled to certify high L infinite robustness with a high dimensional input. In other words, the L2 robust radius by randomized smoothing is almost a constant with respect to the input dimension D. Due to this barrier, further improvements in randomized smoothing become marginal. We find the blind spot in this story. All these barriers only consider the certification methods that only use top class probability information. Instead, we can query more information from the smooth classifier to bypass the theoretical barrier and achieve a tighter robust certification of randomized smoothing. We propose DSRS, a framework to query more information from the smooth classifier for tighter certification. First, let's recall that the classic randomized smoothing is blue box. There, we sample from the smoothing distribution P to get PA and only use PA to derive a certified radius R. 
In our DSRS, besides conducting one sampling process, we propose to sample for another distribution Q and jointly use both PA and QA to derive the robust certification. Viewing from the optimization perspective, in classical RMS smoothing, the certification seeks the worst case function that satisfies the PA constraint. And our DSRS seeks the worst case function that satisfies both PA and QA constraints. Since we had more constraints, DSRS is guaranteed to be tighter, if not equal. We conducted extensive theoretical studies of DSRS tightness. We observed that under concentration property, which generally holds for common classifiers, DSRS can achieve square root D L2 certified radius, which translates to a non-shrinking L infinite radius and thus circumvents the long-standing L infinite barrier of randomized smoothing. This is the first non-barrier circumventing certification method to the best of our knowledge. In practice, DSRS is also significantly better than classic randomized smoothing on MNIST, Cypherton, and ImageNet. Besides deriving a title certification, another way to get a better certified radius, better certified robustness, is to train a model that is more robust and easier to certify. When it comes to randomized smoothing, since the model predicts the most probable class, we require the probability for predicting the ground truth class, namely PA, for the perturbed class input to be as high as possible. We can approximate this hard probability by soft smooth confidence tilt F, which is the expectation of F under Gaussian noise centered at X plus delta. In this work, we observe that the smooth confidence tilt F has a smoothness bound, which is the bound of eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix. And this bound is only uh, dependent on the smoothing variance sigma. Therefore, uh, when sigma is not, not small, from Taylor expansion, we found that given the Hessian matrix bound, by regularizing the zero order term and the first order term, we can effectively uh, bound PA and by an enlarged PA by regularizing these two terms. Now we consider the zeroth order term and the first order term respectively. The zeroth order term tilt F at the clean input X directly corresponds to a large confidence margin. And this is directly differentiable and is easy to optimize. Uh, here comes the first order term. This order term is a bit challenging because we found that to guarantee robustness against any perturbation direction, we need the gradient magnitude to be small enough. However, small gradient magnitude means a very smooth or, or, or very plain landscape. So it hurts the model expressivity, making the model training to be difficult. Luckily, we found that when F is not a single model, but an ensemble, this problem becomes resolved. Why? Consider F to be an ensemble of three base models, F1, F2, and F3. Then the gradient magnitude of F equals to the magnitude of vector sum of gradients of F1 and F2 and F3. It means that if the directions of, L of F1, F2, and F3 are quite diverse, it's quite likely that the whole vector becomes canceled out and results in a small joint gradient magnitude. So the first order regularization boils down to encouraging the gradient diversity among base models within the ensemble, which is believed to be helpful for robustness also from the transferability perspective. Now we encode our zeroth order and the first order terms as two regularizers respectively. There are confidence margin loss and gradient diversity loss. By combining these two terms together during training, we can train models that achieve state-of-the-art L2 robustness for randomized smoothing, showing by the purple line below. After proposing certification and training methods for robustness against LP perturbations, we believe that to achieve real trustworthy machine learning, there are many other specifications in the real world that needs to be considered. 
We also made much progress on formalizing and certifying other specifications. Let me introduce three examples here. The first one is semantic perturbations, where the attacker can apply geometric transformations to the image and then feed it into the classifier. For example, the attacker can pick a rotation angle within 30 degrees and input the rotated image. To certify against this attacker, we propose a divide and conquer strategy. Our strategy for the first time makes certifiably robust image and classifiers against this attacker possible. The strategy first partitions the perturbation region into tiny subregions. Then we rigorously bound the maximum LP difference incurred by the transformation within transformation specific and data specific Lipschitz bound. Finally, we trigger the existing LP certification to compare the certified radius with this maximum LP distance in each tiny interval and get the final certification. We also introduced several optimizations in our strategy to make the whole certification process very scalable. Recently, we also studied the distribution robustness problem. The distribution robustness notion is widely studied in OD robustness and domain transfer community. Here, the certification tries to upper bound the expected loss on the shifted distribution Q. Given the expected loss on the original distribution P, and the distributional distance between P and Q. Previous work on certifying this threat model considers one sustained distance as the metric between P and Q. By leveraging model Lipschitz bound and duality, they propose a method to compute such certificate. However, their method requires a rigorous Lipschitz bound of the model, which is usually loose and hard to be tightened. In contrast, our recent work considers Hellinger distance, a variant of F divergence at the matrix. We directly leverage overlapping support inspired by random smoothing and the Grimian matrix to get the certification. Our certification is easy to compute and the first, for the first time, get rid of Lipschitz constant certification, which makes the certification much tighter and more scalable than before. Then, very recently, we generalized the distribution robustness notion to distribution of fairness notion. Our distribution of fairness certification certifies the model's worst case expected loss on a fair test distribution, where fairness is defined by equalized base rate among protected group in the distribution. This certification bounds the model's worst case performance in a fair real world environment. It can also recover the classical fairness notion, including odd disparity bound and demographic disparity bound. We propose an efficient and effective certification strategy for distribution of fairness. Our strategy first decomposes the whole distribution into several subpopulations based on the sensitive attribute. Then we apply the distribution of robustness bound introduced before to each subpopulation respectively. Lastly, we show the optimization over the linear combination of this bounds is a convex optimization problem. As a result, we formulate a low dimensional convex optimization problem and leverage existing convex optimization solvers to compute such fairness certification very efficiently. Now is the last part of this talk, a discussion of challenges and possible solutions in certified machine learning. In this slide, I will categorize existing challenges and research questions in the field of certified machine learning. The research of certified machine learning starts from the certification and the training methods for robustness against LP bounded perturbations. Stemming from this core problem, there are naturally two main branches of research finding tighter and more scalable certification, and constructing models that are more robust and more friendly for certification. The model construction can be achieved by finding robust model architectures finding effective model training, and proposing robust inference protocols, or the combinations. The shared core open problem for this direction is achieving close to human certified robustness on large scale datasets like ImageNet. Then, to achieve trustworthy machine learning for real world leads, just achieving LP robustness is far from satisfactory. Therefore, the third branch 
of research is to generalize the certified machine learning towards real world requirements and towards general trustworthy AI. Following this tendency, there is a wide range of properties that are needed by AI, and we may need to analyze how to achieve certifiability for all of them. Lastly, although certified machine learning methods are developing fast, we haven't seen the broad applications yet. Actually, there are several challenges that need to be solved for deployment, including training overhead, inference overhead, floating point soundness, and more importantly, denying performance degradation. This slide constitutes my roadmap for future research. Now let's briefly discuss possible solutions. For better certification method, we need to think about how to design more effective abstractions for robust certification. An effective ab abstraction should be able to describe the key properties of the output range while keeping itself concise and efficient for computation. For better model construction, maybe deep responding architecture, implicit models, or error correction with rule-based knowledge could be the key. Or simply scaling the model size as Sebastian Bubek's paper shows may be the key too. For generalizing the certified machine learning methods, the key question is to get a good problem formulation. We intuitively have many properties in mind to let the model satisfy to achieve a trustworthy AI. However, to derive a certified method, we need to define these properties formally and precisely. For example, what exactly does robustness mean? What perturbation set should we consider? Or what exactly does fairness mean? What exactly does interpretability mean? As long as these formal definitions exist, I think solving them or finding certified methods for them is relatively easy. Lastly, for solving the practical issues, there are also a few possible solutions. For example, to reduce the training overhead, we may find ways to robustify the model prediction at inference time, such as self-denoising. To reduce the inference overhead, which many exist for random mass smoothing, we may be able to develop a specific architecture that can give predictions for multiple noise inputs at the same time. To solve the benign performance degradation problem, better training methods or detection method that helps us switch between high accuracy and high robustness models could be helpful. Thank you very much for attending this talk. Any questions and offline discussions with me are very welcomed. Thank you.